Hello, my friends, fellow project managers. Welcome to Visualizing the World of Agile. So I know you guys have been hearing me talking about Agile over the past number of weeks. Agile has become a needed topic in the business space. If you are not familiar with what Agile is, I invite you to spend a few minutes knowing what it is. So when you talk about Agile, it is a mindset first and foremost. It is a mindset of getting things done with agility. Whatever you're working on in business, whether you wanna define it as a project, whether you wanna define it as an operation, whatever the endeavor, you need to have a mindset of agility. In other words, you need to be getting stuff done as agilely as possible, as nimbly as possible. Why would you wanna spend 10 years on a project that can be delivered in two years and give so much value up front instead of waiting for 10 years to go by? In other words, quoting from the Agile Alliance, Agile is the ability to create and respond to change. Create change and respond to change. Because when you talk about project management in the first place, what is it? It's all about change. The PMI gives you that image about moving a firm from their current state to their future state. That's change to me. So when you think about agile, you need to think about how to create change, respond to change, and deal with uncertainty. That's pretty much what it is. Rather than thinking of agile in terms of various ways of delivering software, I would like you to think about Agile as a mindset. You are either Agile in your mind or you're not. And to be Agile in your mind, you need to be open-minded to start with. I remember when my Scrum instructor, Tom Meller, started talking about Scrum and Agile when I went for this class that the PMI Phoenix chapter organized. PMI Phoenix, back in 2011, 2012, they put together this class and they brought in a Scrum instructor. And I wanted to be Scrum certified so that I can know a little bit more about it. But I realized after going through the class that I actually worked for a firm that was in many ways agile in their project management. And we had a rapid application development approach. And that has been described as a flavor of agile. So when we talk about agile software development, let's narrow it down to the software development space, because that is where a lot of these mindsets are exemplified physically. So what is agile software development? Well, agile software development, as the Agile Alliance describes, is more than just frameworks such as Scrum, which we will talk about a little bit, XP, FDD, Crystal, and all the others. It is more than that. You see, Agile software development is an umbrella term for a set of frameworks and practices based on the values and principles expressed in the manifesto for Agile. So let's talk about the Agile Manifesto first, before going any further. Google Agile Manifesto and you will come across the Agile Manifesto. So the Agile Manifesto, I'll share this with you. It states we are uncovering better ways of developing software by doing it and helping others do it. Through this work, we have come to value. Now, this is where the values of Agile are understood. It was these same values that the PMI tested me on, on the ACP exam. And it was very heavily value-focused. 
But as you can see on the screen, it says individuals and interactions over processes and tools. We have come to value working software over comprehensive documentation. We have come to value customer collaboration over contract negotiation. We have come to value responding to change over following a plan. That is, while there is value in the items on the right, we value the items on the left more. People, individuals and interactions, work in software, customer collaboration, responding to change. Now we don't wanna throw out the baby with the bathwater. We're not saying that processes and tools are not helpful. We're not saying comprehensive documentation is not helpful. We're not saying contract negotiation is not essential. And we're not saying plans are not sensible, but think about it like this. I'll give you a few perspectives here for those my friends who were like me, resistant to the world of Agile. What good is following a plan when the ship has sailed? Business has changed, things have dramatically changed, and you're still following the plan? No, you need to be agile. You need to throw the plan in the garbage and be agile. Respond to the change that is happening now. What good is competition through negotiating and feeling, I won? Whereas you could do a hundred times more if you collaborated, if you put your guard down and realized you're working together to accomplish whatever the customer wants. What good is having a whole bunch of documentation, whether it be project or product documentation, and what you're building is no good, it doesn't work. What good are processes and tools when we forget the very people that the project is for or the very people that are working the project. And that's why even though there's value in the items on the right, obviously you don't even need to be agile to have enough sense as a project manager to know that this is very, very true. So when you think about agile in software development, like I said, Think about the Agile Manifesto. Now the Agile Manifesto is one piece of the puzzle. It is not all. In addition to the Agile Manifesto, I also wanna introduce you to the 12 principles of Agile. And I'm gonna go through these very quick. Now let me just tell you that a lot of what I'm sharing with you, believe it or not, is in the book known as the Agile Practice Guide from the PMI. And I will refer you to where that is in the Agile Practice Guide. If you go to the very beginning of the book, this is well spelt out in chapter one. It's called the 12 principles behind the Agile Manifesto and it's on page nine of the Agile Practice Guide. So take a look at that. And I'm gonna share with you while you go through it in the PMBOK Guide, I will share with you what our friends at the Agile Alliance have put out on the page that contains the same. So let's go to that page now and take a brief look. And what does it say? 12 principles behind the Agile Manifesto. Our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. Welcome change in requirements, even late in development. Agile processes hard, hardness change for the customer's competitive advantage. Deliver work in software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with a preference to the shorter time scale. Business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. Build projects around motivated individuals, give them the environment and support they need and trust them to get the job done. The most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face-to-face -face conversation. Number seven, working software is the primary measure of progress. Number eight, agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsors, developers, and users should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. Number nine, continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. Number 10, simplicity. The art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. 
11, the best architectures, requirements, and designs emerge from self-organizing teams. And 12, at regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective than tunes and adjust its behavior accordingly. So those are the 12 principles based on the Agile Manifesto. So when you look at these principles, you realize, okay, it has a slant in its description towards software, and that's all right. But let me remind you, the entire idea around doing many things in the world of Agile actually originated from how they were done before. This is a better mousetrap. It is not an entirely new mousetrap, but it's a better one. So think about it. Our highest priority is to satisfy the customer. This should have always been our underlying mindset, regardless whether you're building software or building a bridge. Number two, welcoming changing requirements, even late in development. Think about it. If the customer could pay for what they really need on the project, because the business is changing so rapidly, wouldn't it make sense to give them what they really need instead of giving them what they signed up for two years ago, but they don't need anymore? It's not gonna make your customers happy sticking to a rigid plan when they need change. For whatever reason, it could be argued on many fronts. And that's why when you think about software and the emerging technological trends versus construction, you can see that Agile, to a large degree, favors this world of software development to some degree, to be honest. Now, it can be used across the board, I know, but it is really a great tool to be used, especially in the area of software development. Yes, we can use it for product development as well, but you see that slant. But I wanna encourage you to not just think about Agile in the world of software alone, there are many aspects and phases within a hardware project where Agile can be used. You could employ Agile in the middle of a project, in a phase, and move back into a hybrid, and move back into Agile, and move back into something predictive. And this is also talked about in the Agile Practice Guide. In the Agile Practice Guide, there's a breakdown very early, and I'd like to encourage you guys to read the Agile Practice Guide because there's a breakdown of when to use Agile, when not to use Agile, and how the flavors of Agile could be in doses across a project in different phases. You don't have to use Agile all the way through. On page 27 of the Agile Practice Guide, you have a breakdown that looks something like this. Agile, Agile, Agile on a project and then predictive, predictive, predictive. So agile development like that. And let's go back to our whiteboard. Agile development, agile, agile, agile development and predictive, predictive, predictive rollout. That is one way you could employ the use of agile. Another use of agile could be Agile and predictive in one phase together. Next phase, agile and predictive in tandem. Agile and predictive in tandem. You're using both to get stuff done. So using both predictive and agile approaches is a common scenario. The PMI says it would be misleading to call the approach agile since it clearly does not fully embody the agile mindset, values and principles. However, it would also be inaccurate to call it predictive since it is a hybrid approach. So the question then becomes, what are some of the mindsets and things that I could take from the world of Agile? But well, let me show you one more view of the world of hybridization. You could have predictive, 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 and then you could have a tiny little Agile component. What can you borrow from the world of Agile? to make your projects more sensible. So an example of this approach would be an engineering firm that is building a facility with a new component. While the majority of the project may be routine and predictable, like many other facility projects the organization has done before, this project incorporates a new roofing material. 
Hence, the introduction of an agile concept, the contractor may plan for some small scale installation trials on the ground first to determine the best installation methods to uncover issues early while there's plenty of time to solve them and incrementally improve processes through experimentation. Now here's another mindset. How about a project that is largely agile, A for agile, and where a small piece of predictive is introduced? This small piece of predictive being introduced could be any of the methods espoused in the predictive world, not to say the predictive world owns it. It could be the concept of managing risks using methods and processes talked about in the PMBOK guide. Methods such as a risk register, risk management plan, managing risk with intentionality. So this depicts a largely agile approach with a predictive component. This could be used when a particular element is non-negotiable or non-executable. Using an agile approach, examples include integrating an external component delivered by a different vendor that cannot or will not partner in a collaborative or incremental way. A single integration is required after the component is delivered. You could use a model that looks like this. So while the world of Agile originated with a software development mindset, don't let's lose sight of the fact that we could actually integrate this in a number of ways, okay? Next, I would like us to begin talking about some of these flavors of Agile while I give you some perspectives. And the first one that I really want to hone in on because it is used by over 70%. So when you talk about the Agile pie, the Agile pie, the truth is that a lot of this pie that exists in the world today, I'll call it the agile pie. A lot of this pie is scrum. When people say we use agile, they're really talking about scrum. And I've shared this with you in a previous broadcast where I showed you that over 70 plus percent of people that use agile in the world are using scrum. So it becomes sensible to really understand Scrum, right? But before we talk about Scrum, I'm going to give you a 101 of Agile framework flavors, so to speak. So there are many, and I may not talk about every single one, but I will put them up on a map here. So this map is gonna show you the breadth of detail, and this is from the PMI, but breadth of detail does not necessarily mean effectiveness or adoption, bear that in mind. So right down here, we have Scrum. When you talk about Scrum in terms of size of elements and the background, it is the smallest of all. It is so, so small, to be honest. Scrum is a single team process framework used to manage product development. The framework consists of Scrum roles, events, artifacts, and rules. And I'm gonna be talking about some of these. But in addition to Scrum, we have FDD, feature-driven development. We have Kanban, which I personally used for my day-to-day -day work. We have XP. We have Lean, somewhere up here. We have Crystal, which is somewhere here. I don't wanna to go too far with all of these methods and others, others. There, there are many other methods, but I want to talk just very briefly 
about a few of them. And I'll just tick them off in red before we jump into Scrum, which is the most widely used one. Is it by coincidence that the most widely used one is right there at the bottom in terms of the breadth? The breadth of life cycle coverage. And talking about the depth of guidance detail. Why do you think people gravitate towards Scrum? It is so accessible. It is very, very easy to understand. It is difficult to implement because some of the assumptions that we make in the world of Scrum are usually violated in everyday project management. I will talk about some of those later on, but let's talk about these methods very quickly. So XP, Extreme Programming, this is a software development approach based on frequent cycles. The name is based on the philosophy of distilling a given best practice to its purest form and applying that practice continuously. XP is most known for popularizing a holistic set of practices intended to improve the results of software principles. So when you think about XP, one of the major features of XP is pair programming. And this will be for another day to go into the details. But think about people programming in pairs. Think about people writing a test first and then programming later. It's crazy, you write a test, Test fails, of course. You write code until you can get both of them to align. It's quite interesting. The next one is Kanban. And one of the easiest ways to understand Kanban is to see a Kanban board, a simple Kanban board. So I'll show you a very simple Kanban board. A simple Kanban board is created with three columns to do doing and done are the columns. Now think about it. Let's say your project manager working on a segment of a project or an entire project. And all these to do's, these are elements of the work. Typically we would say they're user stories. In other words, they are user centered requirements that need to be done. But the to-do column could be anything that needs to be done, broken down into manageable pieces. What you do as you begin to work is move the pieces of work into the doing column and begin to do them. But this is tracking. This column right here is used to track what is being done. You wanna have a work in progress limit. You don't wanna have too many things being done. So based on the team's capacity, you wanna limit the doing column. But ultimately, as you get things done, they then move into the done column. And it's a way for you to holistically and sensibly track, and it's very visual. I introduced this to my director of photography, and he has since been using this, using Trillo, a well-known software program that does this electronically. So it's a very simple concept. Now, going deeper, there's a lot more going on in Kanban. The word Kanban is literally translated as visual sign or card. So it's a signal, pretty much. Kanban in lean manufacturing is a system for scheduling, inventory, control, and replenishment. This process of just-in-time inventory replenishment was originally seen in grocery stores when shelves were restocked based on the gaps in the shelves and not supplier inventory. Unlike most agile approaches, the Kanban method does not prescribe the use of time boxed iterations. Iterations can be used within the Kanban method, but the principle of pulling single items through the process continually and limiting work in progress to optimize flow should always remain intact. All right, let's not get carried away with Kanban just yet because we really want to hit Scrum. Okay. The next one I'm going to talk about is crystal. Crystal methods. Be very careful when you say that. Crystal is a family of methodologies 
Crystal methodologies are designed to scale and provide a selection of methodology rigor based on project size, number of people involved in the project, and the criticality of the project. Crystal methodology realizes that each project may require a slightly tailored set of policies, practices, and processes in order to meet the project's unique characteristics. The families of methodologies use different colors based on weight to determine which methodology to use. The use of the word crystal comes from the gemstone where the various faces represent underlying core principles and values. The faces are a representation of techniques, tools, standards, and roles. A lot of people, by the way, do not classify crystal as an agile approach, but if you read the Agile Practice Guide, you've got a table on page 107. So go to page 107, get a visual of that page, it will make more sense. Okay, when you hear about lean, our next one here, what comes to mind? Lean is all about cutting out waste, cutting out fat. And a lot of people from the world of Six Sigma, they gravitate towards this particular flavor of, of agile methods, if you will. So what is lean in a nutshell? According to a document on PMI.org, lean is a quality improvement management philosophy that began in manufacturing. And the key tenets of lean are one, specify value in the eyes of the customer, identify the value stream and eliminate waste, make value flow at the pull of the customer, involve and empower employees, and continuously improve at the pursuit of perfection. So the relationship between lean and agile is both see the need to be open-minded and they both understand that efficiency is all about people, communication, and delivery of meaningful results, and that being maximized. But there's a tendency for people to latch onto good systems as cure-alls. Lean focuses on squeezing out waste to maximize efficiency, reduce cost, and increase throughput and quality. So some people say, no, lean is not one of the flavors, but in the Agile Practice Guide, it is recognized as one of those. And According to the Agile Practice Guide, PMI says lean software development is an adaptation of lean manufacturing principles and practices to the software development domain and is based on a set of principles and practices for achieving quality, speed, and customer alignment. So, the final one, feature-driven development, FDD. Reading from the PMBOK Guide, this is what FDD is. A feature-driven development project is organized around five processes or activities, which are performed iteratively. Develop an overall model, build a features list, plan by feature, design by feature, and build by features. FDD was developed to meet the specific needs of a large software development project. There are six primary roles in FDD, where individuals can take on one or more of the following roles, project manager, chief architect, development manager, chief programmer, class owner, and or domain expert. And FDD is unique in that it has the FDD development project lifecycle. So I'm gonna expand on this just a little bit. So let's take this over here. So, First one is develop a high level model. Next step, develop a features list. Next step is to plan by feature. Design by feature.
and lastly built, of course, by feature. And you see a lot of similarity in a lot of these agile flavors. We see the whole idea about iterations, things being done in iterations and increments. And then we revise the model. Okay, so going back to what we are going to be talking about next, we're gonna be talking about Scrum in part two. I'll see you when we come back.